Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's give God some praise on Sunday, May the 26th. Woohoo! Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I am super, super excited to be before you and before our Facebook audience. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker, and I am kind of filling in as if that was even possible for our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. They are taking a little birthday vacay getaway before Mallory shows up. So um, we just hope that they are having an awesome time in the Lord and um, that we don't get in trouble. That's the goal. But (laughs) I just want to start. Pastor Kendra always declares this litany over us. And I was like, Lord, I really love that because it blesses me. And so while I'm reading this litany, I want you to just open your spirit and let it draw you into a realm of miracles. Sometimes we think the preach word is where we're going to get our revelation, but just the going forth of the word, you can get healed while we're taking the offering, okay? Um, So for the next five minutes, just forget about yourself and just concentrate on our God. He is awesome. Psalm 103 and 1 declares, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So this is our litany. We praise you, Jesus. Because you are our life and our love. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the name above all names. We praise you, Jesus. You are Emmanuel, God with us. We praise you, Jesus. You are the king of kings. We praise you, Jesus. You are the king of creation. Oh, God. We praise you, God, because you are the king of the universe. You are the Lord of lords. We praise you, Jesus. You are the almighty. You are the Christ. You are Christ the king. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the lamb of God. You are the lion of Judah. You are the bright and morning star. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our champion and our shield. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our strength and our song. We praise We praise you, Jesus, because you are the real life. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace, the light of the world. We praise you, Jesus. You are the redeemer. We praise you, Jesus. You are the Messiah. We praise you, Jesus. You are the anointed one, the holy one of Israel. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the good shepherd. We praise you, Jesus. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the rock of all ages. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our hiding place. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our strong tower and our mountain refuge. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the living waters. We praise you, Jesus because you are the true vine. We praise you, Jesus. You are our deliverer. You are our victory. You are our salvation. You are our righteousness. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our wisdom. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our sanctification. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our justification. We praise you, Jesus, you are the great I am. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the great high priest. We praise you, Jesus, you are the cornerstone. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our joy. You are our portion and our cup. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our healing and our wholeness. We praise you, Jesus, because you are our cup. Covenant. We praise you because you are the most high God. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the lamb that was slain. We praise you, Jesus, you are the just judge. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the balm of Gilead. We praise you, Jesus, you are the mighty warrior. You are our defense. You are the bridegroom. We praise you, Jesus, because you are the solid reality. We praise you, Jesus, you are our provider. We praise you, Jesus. You are the resurrection and the life. We praise you, Jesus. You are the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. We praise you, Jesus. You are all that we need. You are all that we want. We praise you, Jesus, because you are worthy of all praise. So, Father, at this moment, God, we make a conscious decision to take our focus off of us and place our focus on you. Thank you, Father God 
God, that when we think about how awesome you are, our lips cry out with praise. God, the truth is you've covered us all week long. You've been with us, God, as we've traveled, as we've gone places, as we've done things, God, as we've lied down, God. We lied down in peace and we woke up in peace, God. We thank you for covering us and for keeping us, God. So today, before we ask you for anything, we just want to thank you for everything. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for this body of believers who is steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for the freedom to worship you, God. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you, God. Thank you, Father God, that things are as well as they are. God, we've still got some needs and still got some requests, God, but we thank you that things are as well as they are. We thank you for a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. We thank you, Father God, for just blessing us to be a blessing. God, we want to be a conduit of your goodness and of your grace and of your mercy. God, we want to live in the fruits of the Spirit. God, we have come out for no other reason, God, than to worship you and to exalt your name, God. We do not take it lightly, the assembling together of the saints, God, because your word declares that iron sharpens iron. So I thank you, God, for the fellowship, God. I thank you for the opportunity to pray with other believers on Facebook Live. I thank you, Father God, for this conduit, God, where there is no distance in the spirit, God, that they are here with us in worship and we are there with them, God, that we have the ability to connect and to praise your name together. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in us, for us, and through us. God, your word declares that obedience is better than sacrifice. So, God, here we are being recklessly obedient to everything that you've called us to do. God, bless the woman of God that will bring the word on today, God. Father, you sit her down and you speak boldly through her, God. Father, God, as she yields to you, God, I believe that she's done her work in the natural, God, but anoint her with a supernatural ability that makes preaching and teaching easily so that a rhema word will fall on each person that they will get exactly what they need. I thank you, Father God, for the order of worship. I thank you that everything will be done decent and in order so that the enemy is horrified, your name is glorified, and that your people are forever edified. God, we absolutely love you on today. So with the fruit of our lips, we give you praise. There is a sweet spirit resting in this place. When we came in this morning, there was a gentle rain falling. And it was like the anointing. It was a refreshing for your people, God. And so I thank Thank you for the people who press their way through the rain, God. I decree and declare blessings and favor will rain down upon them, God, that will saturate their very being, God. I thank you, Father God, for a supernatural shift because they did not think it robbery to press forward and to come out to be with your people, God, that you will pour another blessing upon them, God, a blessing that not only equips them for this day but for this week for the rest of this month, Father God, that you will just cover them, God, that you will meet every one of their needs according to your riches and glory. God, that you will show their, yourself strong on their behalf, God, that healing is the children's bread, and we make no peace with any type of infirmity, God. We cast every one of our cares over unto you because you care for us. God, I thank you for the shift that I feel happening even now, and God, even as we go into praise and worship, we will continue to exalt you, continue to cast our cares over unto you because we care for you. This is your service, God. Have your way in every way. In Jesus' name, amen.
You can say it awesome, 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 breathtaking, marvelous, magnificent, and holy. bless your name Jesus oh we bless your name Jesus Woo, God we give you glory today hallelujah Jesus God you're worthy in this place hallelujah God you're worthy when it's raining you're worthy when the sun is shining God you're worthy on Memorial Day weekend we give you glory God just because of who you are, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, you're so worthy. You're so holy. You're so awesome. God, we exalt your holy name in this place. God, we magnify you with the fruit of our lips. God, there is none like you in all the earth. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah, God. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, there's none like you, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, you're so sweet. Who your presence is so sweet. Oh, God, we just thank you. Lord, we just praise you. Jesus, we honor you. Oh, we adore your name. Worthy is the Lamb. Yeah. Woo! Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah, God. Woo! Glory to your name, Jesus. Woo, God. Woo, when I think about, woo, bless your name, God. Woo! Jesus, you're worthy. Mm. Oh, God, when I think about. Oh, glory. Where I was just six months ago. Hallelujah. Woo, he's worthy. Bless your name, God. Woo. Oh, y'all have to. Woo. Yeah. Mm. Glory, 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 glory. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, he's worthy today. Bless the name of Jesus. So we just come before you today, Lord, and we worship you with our giving. Hallelujah. He's been so good. He's been so good. Ooh, if he never does another thing, he's been so good. But he's not done. He's not finished. Amen. Ooh, so we're going to worship the Lord with our giving today and our scripture this morning comes from Luke 638 Luke 638 and look at me I took my glasses off I got too many yeah I have 2020 vision in Jesus name all right and so I'm going to read you from the NLT and then from the TPT, the Passion Translation. So Luke 638 in the NLT says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Oh, we bless your name. And so we want to give cheerfully. We want to give happily. It's an honor and a privilege to bless him. It's just another way to bless him. You know, we bless him with our lips, 
We bless him in our bodies. Our bodies are made a living sacrifice unto God, but we can bless him with our giving. Amen. So it's just another way to bless the Lord. We bless him with our giving. The Passion Translation of Luke 638 reads, give generously and generous gifts will be given back to you shaken down to make room for more abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflowing measure that it will run over the top oh amen it will run over the top we cannot beat god giving we just can't we can't and so it is a privilege and an honor to bless him with our giving so it says i'm gonna read that again abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflowing measure that it will run over the top the measurement of your generosity becomes the measurement of your return amen so let us give generously, lovingly, happily, cheerfully, exuberantly as we bless the Lord for he is worthy. Amen. He's good and we bless his name. So you can give uh, using Givelify. Just look up Pursue for His Presence Ministries. You can use Cash App, and it is dollar sign P4HPMIN. That's dollar sign P4HPMIN. Or you can text to give 615-492-8855. Text to give, okay? Um, Or you can even click on p4hp.org and click giving. Amen. So let us give unto the Lord happily. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Kimmy, for that wonderful offering message. And thank you, E.P. Shonda, for the way in which you have led us in worship today. Bless um, God for you. Uh, Bless God for you as you uh, have, um, yeah, been our conductor on today. A wonderful one at that. Um, You all have to forgive me. When they played that Israel Halton, 
the uh, the first the first lyrics of that song says light of the world you stepped down into darkness and i just lost it <laughs> i really wanted to remain you know composed i done pressed uh this uh blazer like three times this morning oh uh, you know what i'm saying i done laid down my edges i really wanted to remain composed but when that song said light of the world you stepped down into darkness Again, E.P. Shauna has already done a great job of leading us into worship. But just in case you had been asleep before that song, just in case you had been asleep before that song, light of the world stepped down into darkness for you. And I feel the presence of the Lord. He stepped down into darkness. He made a choice to step down into darkness for you before you even knew you needed the light of the world. And then the song goes on to say, and you opened my eyes so that I may see. Then the song goes on to say, beauty that made this heart. We're talking about the heart today. Beauty that made this heart adore you. The beauty that it's talking about, y'all, is when he was beaten to be unrecognizable at the cross. It wasn't a beautiful sight. He wasn't a beautiful sight. But the act of him doing that was beautiful. And it should make your heart adore him. My God, in the event that you were asleep, Facebook Live up in here, in the event that you were nodding off before they played, here I am to worship. Go on do throughout this service, even as I'm bringing the message. Light of the world step down into darkness for you. Let that speak to your heart and prepare your heart for the message. Because we're going to be talking about the heart today. Amen. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we bless your holy name. Light of the world, we love you. Light of the world. Thank you for stepping down into darkness for us. Thank you for enduring the cross for us. Before we, would ever, before we ever knew we needed you, you knew we needed you. And you needed us. You wanted us. You desired us, which is what made you step down into darkness for us. Lord, I thank you that every heart that is listening to this message on today is pliable with the message that you stepped in darkness for them. You stepped in darkness for me. You stepped in darkness for our children and our children's children. You stepped down into darkness as an act of love for us. Before we ever chose to be loved or knew that we needed your love, you stepped down into darkness for us. So, Lord... Thank you for this message on today. Thank you that it goes into soft and pliable hearts because the, the, the path has already been planted, God. So we thank you that the hearts are pliable soil producing a 30, 60, and 100-fold harvest. Lord, none of me and all of you, we are your witnesses. We are your hands and your feet on today. Have your way in this service. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, so that I show that I was raised right, let me give honor to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. Let me give honor to our EP uh, pastors, um, uh, Executive Al, Executive Pastors Al and Shonda. Let me give um, honor to our our wonderful Pursuit for His Presence family, whether you are here in the physical or watching um, abroad. We love you. Uh, let me give honor to you all know that there's a, a six foot one man that I'm absolutely crazy about with good hair and light eyes and he is in the front <laughs> he is in the front um he's in the front row our kids gonna be so cute y'all with good hair um but um everybody knows there's a man I'm crazy about my husband that allows me to just do and be who I, I want to be and 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 um it has been wonderful being married to this this great man and then um just to honor my great mother who is also here um but yes yeah, so 
so y'all know I was raised right. All right. Okay. So y'all know, you know. All right. Um, what we are talking about today um, is your faith confession. Your faith confessions are not in vain. Let me repeat. Your faith confessions are not in vain. Our uh, scripture, our foundational scripture for today is going to be Romans 10, 9 through 13. Okay. Romans 10, 9 through 13. And then I'm going to go ahead and read that. Romans 10, 9 through 13. All righty. So it says this, starting at verse (coughs) 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'm going to say that one more time. If you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him for everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. So in this um, particular scripture, I'm going to sum it up like this. I'm going to sum it up and believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Right. Um, When you if you are ministering to someone who needs to be saved, um, chances are that you may not be in a necessary position to pull out and say, let's read this together. But what you do know is there is a scripture that says you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. So, again, we're talking about your your faith confessions are not in vain. The particular testimony that the Lord brought to my mind when preparing this message was the uh, testimony about how Jeff and I got our home. And uh, we started the home process from in March of 2021 and it went until December of 2021. And during that time, now, now keep in mind, this was a complete faith step. We were a year and some change into being married. Uh, we had been looking for a home and, and kept hearing no and no and no. You know, as in the words of Pastor of, of E.P. Sean, the credit didn't get it. We kept hearing no. Um, and this one random Saturday, we got a call saying, you applied to come look at these houses we building. Are you coming? And we was like, we did. And I started to say, tell her, we ain't nobody pro- agreed for us with no home. And Jeff was like, I ain't telling her nothing. That's her job. Get your stuff. Pack up your stuff. We're about to go. I ain't telling her nothing. I was like, okay. So get there, and the whole time I'm thinking this is a joke. This lady going to say, oh, we pulled up your stuff. You ain't got this whole time. But somehow three and some hours and some change later, we had a lot with some money down. And I stepped outside to call Pastor Kendra, and I said, they trying to give us a house. Now, is this real? Because I, and she was like, girl, get yourself together. Because now it's really about to start your faith walk. Getting the little, your land is great, but now you're really about to start because you're going to have to stand throughout this process. So at the start of this process, somewhere in, in, the, in the start of this process, we had been told that closing cost was going to be $9,200, $77.83, some change. Some we didn't have. I don't know. Some astronomical. Keep in mind that, s- that to, to get the lot had exhausted everything that Jeff had. I mean, we had because it's us, our stuff, <laughs> everything that Jeff we had had, because I had put some on it, EP. I put some on it. So it exhausted, you know, what we had. So we were, you know, we had, during that time from March 2021 to December 2021, we were saving, we were putting up, but as we were saving, it was going now, because your house need dishes, you need this, you need that. So one of the confessions that I made um, at the start of buying that, of, of us securing that home, building that home, According to Psalm 37, 4 and 5, it says, you delight yourself in the Lord and he gives you the desires of your heart. Commit yourself to him and he will help you. What I said to the Lord from the very beginning was, Lord, I do not want to exhaust our funds moving into this house. I don't want to be a zero moving into this house. I don't. That was a desire. Now, I didn't get, I can be very honest and say, I didn't get in a prophetic setting. You're not going to have to put up no money for this. I didn't get that. But it was a desire of my heart. Um, so I kept confessing that. And I, and I would say, according to Psalm 37, you give me the de- I delight myself in you and you give me the desires of my heart. We're not going to exhaust all that we have to move into this house. Again, didn't have any prophetic word that said that. It was just a desire of my heart. Now, so we get on, get on, get on, get on. 
come October of 2021, um, it's still looking like we owe on closing calls nine thousand two hundred eighty three thousand seventy seven cents. Again, some astronomical that we didn't have no way. Um, also, throughout the process, the Lord is preparing us like we are gonna have to owe this nine thousand two hundred eighty three dollars seventy seven cents. He's still he's still going on, right? Now I'm still confessing according to Psalm thirty seven. This is the desire of my heart, Lord. I'm still confessing, and he's still saying stuff like, go into your 401ks. And he's still, he's still acting like we going to owe this $9,283.77. I ain't say nothing. Throughout the, throughout the time, I was obedient, right? I kept my heart pliable. And he gave us two promises concerning this house. The house was ours, and we would have a home in 2021. Even in the events that it didn't look like, we was going to have this home in 2021. Those were our two promises. It's y'all's, and you will have a home in 2021. So starting in October, them closing calls started to come down a little bit, out of anywhere. Like, number one, they messed up our cabinets. Some cab Now, I specifically told the lady, these are the cabinets I want right here because they're baller. That's what I told her. They look balling to me, <laughs> and I want people to walk into my house and say they balling. I don't care if we ain't. I'm saying what I want to portray when b balling. We, me, my mom was there. We had this whole like 17 minute conversation about the cabinets that I wanted in my house because they looked balling. They gave me some cabinets from Little House on a Prayer. So when we found out that these were our cabinets, I was like, these are not my cabinets. They was like, oh, we're going to take about $1,500 off the closing costs. Okay, cool. The cabinets are ugly, but that's fine. You're going to take 1500 So it started to like chip away, chip away, chip. So it also, in the meantime, we still going into our 401ks to get this closing calls. And they're delaying our closing. You ain't going to close this month. Give us about two, three weeks. Well, you ain't going to close this week. Let us settle up some things, and you'll close next week. Next week came, and they were like, we don't know when you're going to close. Like, that was the last conversation. We don't really know when you're going to close. And then the last week of December, last week of the year, we get a call saying, be at the closing table on Thursday at whatever, whatever. That was two days. We had two days, okay? Somewhere in between November and the last week of December, we went from owing, because, again, they took $1,500 for messing up my cabinets. So we ended up owing, we went down to maybe about $7,000, until on closing costs, we got a cashier's check for $243. I can't even really tell you where and how that happened. Can't even really tell you where and how it happened. But I made a confession. And my confession was, I do not want to move into this home at zero. I do not want to exhaust our monies, everything that we have, to move into this home. And I base it off of Psalm 37, 4, and 5. This is the point that I'm making here. Um, during that time, that there were some things that we stayed in step with. Again, I told you I stayed obedient. We stayed obedient. So I wasn't trying to hold on to every single dollar knowing that the Lord is saying, go get you a bedroom suit. I wasn't trying to hold on, to knowing that, trying to make up my own stuff, basically, is what you're saying. Well, Lord, we ain't, we going to have some money when we move up in here, so I'm not going to go get that bedroom suit. I must have not heard you when you said go get the decorative pillows or the new dishes. I was still, we were still very much listening and obedient. When E.P. Shonda, when Pastor Kendra, when Minister Tiffany or Gianna would randomly call me and say, what you supposed to be doing this week for this house? Are you doing it? We were obedient, right? And our hearts remained flexible and pliable because guess what? I, like I just told you, up until October, it still looked like we was owing $9,283.776. It still looked like we were going to owe all of this money. And again, the Lord is telling us, go pull it from here, go pull it from here. He's telling, he, he acting like, we was going to owe this money on closing costs. But we didn't trip. Let's go into this little account. Let's do that. Let, we didn't trip. We did what he told us to do. I'm still confess. And then, again, the whole time, no one pulled me aside and said, now, the Lord gave me a dream. You ain't going to owe no money on closing Nobody said that. But I found a scripture. That was my confession. What the Lord said to me in preparing this message is, think about your faith confession like your authority. 
when we take authority all over a storm and a storm still happens, and we're left like, now why the storm still happen? We done took authority over the, what we don't realize is that that was not in vain. Your relentless and boldness and faith to speak to a storm. So maybe there was one casualty in that county, but your prayers prevented 700 casualties from being in that county. Your confessions made in faith don't go in vain. Maybe you were speaking to your knee and you were saying, I'm not going to have, my knee is healed. I'm not going to have to get any more shots in my knee when I go to the doctor. My knee is healed. And maybe the next doctor's appointment you had, the doctor was like, yeah, we're going to have to put some shots up in it if you want to be comfortable. And maybe the doctor's appointment after that said, yeah, you're going to have to let us put some shots up in that so that uh, you remain comfortable. But maybe by your third doctor's appointment, the doctor was like, something look different. I think we're good. Your faith confession doesn't go in vain. So maybe it didn't happen exactly when you thought or how you thought, but it happened. So in you being bold, being bold and relentless in your confession of faith, where, where it was going to take six months for that healing to come, you helped it hurry along because of your boldness and your relentlessness in faith. Amen? Amen. So we're going to talk about, and I'm after this, I'm getting out of your hair. We're going to talk about three things that's going to help you keep your confession. Because recently when I was, wh wh this message was birthed out of um, some personal time I was having in my prayer closet with the Lord about some promises that Jeff and I were standing on. I said, Lord, you know, I'm used to like a little diagram with some bullet points. I want to, you know, I want scriptures for everything. I want to clear path of where I'm going. You gave me this administrative gift, so I like to know where we're going. I like that. Right, Dr. Lori? I, I like to know where this is going to go and how we're getting there and what time we're going to stop for gas and then after we stop for gas, what time we're going to get something to eat. I want to know all of the details of that. Okay? And so I was telling him we have these promises we're standing for and I know the promise again, he gave us two, he told us when we were getting this house, the house is yours and you're going to have it in 2021. And I told y'all we closed on like December 27th. Right? We had the keys in our hand. When I moved in, we had the keys in hand. Right? He didn't lie. So um, I like to know so how this is going to pan out. And so I was telling the Lord recently, you gave us these promises we're standing for them, but I don't really know what to confess because I can't really see down the line. I see the promise, but I don't see the in-between. So I don't really know what to confess. And he said to me, any confession you make in faith is not in vain. So be bold. Boldly declare and be open and be flexible and keep your, keep your heart pliable and we're going to get there. And, and you just being bold in faith like you are will get you there in a better way than it was going to do before. Am I making sense? But the enemy would want to make you feel stupid, bewildered, confused. Lord, I don't really know what to do, what to say. Well, I know you want a better job for me. Lord, I want the CEO job, but I ain't qualified for that job. I can't be confessing that job is mine. The enemy would want to keep you boggled up in confusion and bewilderment. But faith was simple. That's why he gave it to you. In his spirit, you have the nature of God, and within that, you have his faith. He gave you his faith. This is simple. The enemy would try to keep you bewildered about the details, but sometimes the devil is in them details. Don't, 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 get, too, don't get too much entrenched in the details of that. So we're going to look at three things that's going to help you to keep your confession because, again, the enemy would love nothing more than to keep you silent, keep you confused, make you feel embarrassed. Oh, the Lord done told you, go get this $9,283 out. Thought you said you was going to move in at zero. Mm, guess that didn't work. The enemy would love to taunt you with that, okay? So three things that's going to help you keep your confession. Number one, we're going to go to Mark 9. Nope, we're going to go to Mark 11, sorry. Mark 11. Uh, we're going to look at verses 23 and 24. So Mark 11, 23 and 24 says, I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. 
I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. So the first thing that's going to help you to keep your confession is speak to the mountain, okay? The, the transaction of faith that happens, and I feel the presence of the Lord, in the spirit realm, when you decide you're going to speak to a circumstance, it is so beyond what we could naturally in our minds gather because it's like you put the, the uh, kingdom of darkness on notice that you're not going to ever lay down and allow circumstances to roll over you. That's what you're doing when you're speaking to the mountain. I don't care if the mountain is still there when you wake up. When you speak to it, there's a spiritual transaction that happens in the spirit that says, oh, wait a minute, Valerie means business. Now, we sent confusion her way. We sent a little bit of debt her way. We sent one of them kids her way to uh, get smart with her on Friday afternoon. I don't know if they would do that because that wouldn't be uh, smart in my eyes because Valerie looked like she got them hands. So um, we're going to see one of these kids her way to get on her nerve. Uh, we gonna, uh, what else we going to do? Oh, somebody going to park on the church grass. We're going to have, have an attitude about that. We're going to send all these things. But when, but when Valerie decides every time that something happens, oh, I speak to that. Oh, I, I rebuke that. Oh, we're not having that. There's a spiritual trans action that happens in the in the spirit where you get to then not only keep your confession but you hold fast to your confession you take possession of that confession when you tell the enemy exactly what it's not going to do amen second thing pursue the promise okay we're talking about what helps you keep your confession pursue the promise go to Romans 4 with me And Romans 4, starting at verse 16, says, So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it whether or not we live according to the law of Moses, if we have faith like Abraham. So I'm going to read it how I have it highlighted in my Bible. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it if we have faith like Abraham's. And just in case you need a reminder of what Abraham's faith looks like, this is because, this happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead things back to life and creates new things out of nothing. In my uh, time, studying time of Romans 4, as many of you know, it's one of my favorite scriptures to, to, to review. But in my recent study time, what the Lord said, you are, you are certain to receive it if you demonstrate faith like Abraham demonstrated faith well how did he demonstrate his faith well he believed in a God that brings dead things back to life and he believed in a God that calls on things that be not as though they are so he demonstrated his faith through his belief so you are certain to receive the promise the free gift of the promise by faith if you demonstrate your faith like Abraham's you already have faith we know that because within you is the very spirit of God, which is the very nature of God and everything that God is. Within that is his faith, mountain moving, powerful, speak to a thing, and it is so faith. So you already have faith like Abraham. You are called to demonstrate your faith like Abraham demonstrated his faith. So when we're talking about holding fast to your confession, one of the, th one of the other things that's going to help you to do that is when you constantly pursue the promise, right? So after you've taken your authority to speak to the mountain, you've got to keep the promise in your very, very, in very, very front of your eyes. Because again, one of the things he told us is this house is yours and you will have it in 2021. But if, out of, of, of along the way, the things that get in, in the way, on the way to the promise, discourage you, have you down, have you wanting to retreat, have you scared, have you fearful, have you afraid, then you will lose sight of the promise. It will become um, um, murkier, 
and and glory and you because you so bogged up with the journey that it took to get to the promise the promise then becomes more distant and more distant and more distant so in keeping your confession because again the, the title of this is your conf- your faith of conf- your confessions of faith do not go in vain but the enemy would like more you nothing more than to silence you because he knows how powerful your speech is he knows you have the nature of God on the inside of you at one point he was cool with God so he knows what that what that's like at one point so he will love nothing more than to silence you but you have to speak to the mountain and you have to keep the promise in front of you so that you keep going lastly keep a pliable heart let's go to mark 9 um, verse 16 mark 9 and verse 16 nope sorry we're still in Mark 9. <laughs> We're actually going to go down to Y'all think I put the wrong scripture on here. Forgive me media. It is Mark 4. Mark 4 parable of the sower. Mark 4 and going down to verse 20. Honey, can I have those tissues, please? Thank you so much. Okay. Mark 4 going down to verse 20. And verse 20 says, and the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. So in addition to Mark 9, so number one, Mark 9, um, Romans 10, we're talking about the activity and the condition of your heart. A few uh, Bible studies ago, I did, um, about it was my turn to do Bible study, and the title of that was The Condition of Your Heart, because what the Lord pointed out to me and told me to be, be transparent was ab- about is that in this season, he hasn't had to tell me, you know, a lot of, you know, getting the word and, and do that, but he is having me to constantly check the condition of my heart, because as the word is going forth, whether it be in my personal time on Sunday morning or doing a Bible study, study on Wednesday or on a prayer call on Saturday with Minister Kim, no matter when the, the, the word is going forth, it is my job to make sure that my heart stays pliable. That's my job. So I have to keep it offense-free, fear-free. I have to keep the worries and the cares of the, wor- of the world out. I have to make sure that I'm doing things that are conducive to the word going forth and being planted in good soil. That's my responsibility. And, one of, and in our uh, foundational scripture for today, it said that you believe in your, and then you confess out of your mouth. So another thing when it talks, when you're talking about keeping your confession, keeping your confession, not being silent, make sure your heart stays pliable. Make sure you stay out of strife. Make sure you're staying out of condemnation. That's a big one. Make sure you're staying out of guilt. Make sure you're staying out of shame. Again, the whole process, we, it was looking like we were going to owe this $9,283.776. It was look, the whole process up until the last like 60 days. It looked like we were going to owe that entire bill. And again, the enemy would love nothing more for me to take on. Mm, guess that didn't work. So, what y'all going to do? Y'all ain't going to have no fun until. What, what y'all gonna do? Y'all ain't gonna, where you gonna sleep at? What you, what you gonna do? What y'all gonna do? The enemy would love nothing more for me to have taken that bait. Because sometimes it came. Sometimes it came. But if that happened and I take the bait, then my heart, now my heart is full, filled with worries, cares. It's marked out in, in Mark 4, um, starting in verse 13. Then I've, I've made it rocky soil. Nothing good comes out of some rocky soil. So then because I've taken it into my heart and I've meditated, well, man, it looked like we're going to owe it. And maybe it didn't work. Well, Lord, if my faith can't do this, what else can my faith not do? Now I'm meditating on it. Now are we going to have the house even? I got a little cough in the Is this the flu? Now what is going on over here? You know what? I ain't going to say nothing because, Lord, now you said, but I guess you didn't say, so I ain't going to say nothing now. The enemy will love nothing more than you to go down that rabbit trail and that will keep you from confessing and it will also then have you to agree with his foolishness well maybe I don't well well, well, Pastor Kendra need me to speak on Sunday what I'm gonna say 
My, look at my faith. Look at what I've been. What look? What have I done? It will have you down a dark path if you let it. The enemy will love nothing more than to silence you. So these three things: speak to the mountain, pursue the promise, and keep a pliable heart will help you keep your confession. And listen, no confession that you make is in vain. We read in our fun. Uh, foundational scripture and I'm done we read in our foundational scripture that he does not call shame to come upon you I believe that was on verse 13 back in uh, Romans 10 um, 9 through I think 13 Um, but one of those verses says he doesn't cause you to be shamed to be embarrassed no no confession that you boldly make in faith will go in vain so be bold Make the confession. Speak to the mountain. Whatever he has promised you, keep it in front of your face and keep your heart as as good soil. So maybe it doesn't happen in the two months, but you but you being bold enough brought it in the fifth month instead of the enemy wanting to keep you from it for 13 months. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't go in vain. He is not going to put you to shame. He is the the high priest of whose confession? ours he's the high priest of our confession that means that is it is his job to look over our confessions and have those things carried out be bold be bold amen amen so get your elements i told you that's all i had praise god praise god So, Lord, we bless you, and we honor you, Jesus, and we worship you. God, we thank you. Light of the world, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for being our high priest, that we are no longer under the law, but we are under grace. We are under the blessing, and you are our high priest of compassion. God, your work is finished and it is done, and all you have called us to do is to walk in it and receive. Right now, Lord, with you in mind at the cross, we make a decision to walk in your promises because you did not go to the cross in vain, Lord, to not to make your to make your act of going to the cross of effect. We make a decision to walk in your promises by faith. So, Lord, we walk in promises of healing and wholeness in every single area of our lives, in our physical bodies, in our emotional state, in our mental state, even in our finances. We can boldly confess um, wholeness and healing. And we know that no confession we make is in vain because we have the cross to point to in the name of Jesus. Take and eat. Amen. Now, Lord, we thank you for the blood, the blood of Jesus that shed for us on Calvary's tree. It is the blood that makes us in right standing with you so that we can actually decree a thing and it be so. We are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. We are kings and priests here on this earth. And it is all because of your blood we take and drink. Amen. E.P., you got anything else? Or? Look at Minister Tomasa easily cutting up. I, I just, the, the song that keeps rolling around in my spirit is the C.C. Winans song that says, um, you said it, I believe it is so. There, if you look at the theme of the words that have been coming from this pulpit over the last few weeks, God is so intentional about what we say and the condition of our heart and and I just wanted to open the altar if there's any of you that we need to stand with about some confessions that you've made or you've plucked up your fruit or you've gone down that rabbit hole because it's so easy to do I I, I just I'm always 
thankful when people give their testimony of what it took because sometimes you see what people have and you don't realize how they had to stand for it and, and how they had to call for reinforcements and all of that. So we are here to reinforce you today. Don't leave out here with any guilt, shame, or condemnation. If you are believing God for something, we want the opportunity to stand with you and to believe God with you as well. So there are going to be some teams of ministers at the altar to pray with you today. We just cover Yes, God. Yes, God. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. And I stir up the gift that is within you. I decree and declare that you shall live to declare the works of the Lord. I decree and declare that your life will be a living testimony of the goodness and of the faithfulness of our God. I decree and declare that every stony place in your heart is now being plucked up that God himself is doing surgery in your body, that he is he that he is healing you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, that he is shifting the atmosphere in your home, in your family, among your children, in your finances. The favor that is over your life will go before you and open doors. I decree and declare that you lack nothing because Jehovah Jireh, is our provider. This will be a week that will be overflowing with miracle signs and wonders. I decree and declare that you lack nothing. That Memorial Day will shift you into a season of blessing. I thank you for being the faithful God that the words that we have received today are being planted in our heart and we will continue to water them and they will produce fruit I thank you Father God for teaching us what it looks like to walk a lifestyle of faithfulness thank you God I just keep hearing God saying it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Do you trust him enough to praise him before you see it? It is already done. You have the confessions of faith that came from your lips it is so. The blood of Jesus cover you as you go throughout your day and throughout your week. We love you with the love of Christ. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.